Welcome to The Right Take. I'm Mark Tapson. This week, Time Magazine announced its 2016 Person of the Year, President-elect Donald Trump. This doesn't mean the media suddenly love the Donald. Person of the Year is a dubious honor that has gone to such notorious past figures as Osama bin Laden, Vladimir Putin, the Ayatollah Khomeini, Adolf Hitler, and Joseph Stalin. Twice. On the other hand, Time twice featured the left's beloved Barack Obama, too. And unlike the magazine's fawning, iconic cover photos of Obama, this time an intimidating, even threatening Trump looks out from the cover through narrowed eyes as if he's contemplating deporting the reader. Coincidentally, or maybe not, this was also the week that the New York Times posted reviews of the year's 100 notable books, among them a new biography of Hitler that the paper called Timely. How could a book about Hitler be timely, you may wonder? Why, because the leftist media see Trump as an American Hitler, of course, and they have framed his rise to power as the result of a white nationalist movement that seeks to reinstate slavery and put Mexicans and Muslims into internment camps. The caption on the Time magazine cover declares that Trump is President of the Divided States of America, and the cover story itself highlights his polarizing impact on people. It's hard to measure the scale of his disruption, wrote Time, which is quite an accomplishment, considering that Trump hasn't even moved into the White House yet. Funny how Time never wrote about the hard-to-measure scale of disruption that Barack Obama has wreaked upon the nation in eight years as president, how he has pitted black against white, gay against straight, female against male, immigrant against citizen, left against right, and how he will leave this nation more broken and contentious than at any time since the 1960s. But then, the progressive media would never admit that Obama has been a divider and not the unifier he promised. Instead, the left, which never plays defense, only offense, blames Trump for poisoning political discourse with what Time called vile streams of racism, sexism, and nativism. But as usual, such hysterical accusations are psychological projections of the left's own ugly qualities. It is the left that has poisoned the well of American politics with vile streams of racism, radical feminism, and multiculturalism. It isn't Donald Trump and a resurgent right that have divided the country. America was divided long before the election campaigns got underway by progressives and their messiah Barack Obama. Powered by the subversive strategy of cultural Marxism, progressivism is the politics of identity, and it is by its very nature divisive. Identity politics ghettoizes Americans into rigid categories of race, gender, and class in order to pit supposedly victimized minorities against the supposedly oppressive white, heteronormative capitalist power structure. That's why the left claims paradoxically that there is strength in diversity. Diversity of skin color and gender, of course, but absolute conformity of thought. And why the left's strategy is not to debate policy or counter facts with facts, but to relentlessly demonize straight white middle Americans as the source of all evil, greed, and bigotry. Donald Trump is terrifying to the left because his election victory is in large part a successful reaction to and counteroffensive against the corrosive threat of identity politics. A Trump presidency could be the beginning of taking America back from the dividers and restoring American unity and, yes, its greatness as well. And that's the right take. I'm Mark Tapson. See you next time.